Hello there, fellow humans, and welcome to another episode of your replays. This time, over 7,000. How do we do it? And if you want to send me your replays, put them down on my Discord server. Link in the description. We start off with the Gun Depression Beast VSTB1 with Gamer0054. 3,300 DPM, 11 degrees of gun depression, and good enough armor to essentially tank a lot of shots when you're hull down, especially when you keep the vehicle wiggling and moving. And that is already one of the basic tips of Blitz. Don't stop unless you have to for aiming. If you keep your tank wiggling, especially if you have a very accurate tank, you can keep the tank wiggling back and forth. If you then learn how to time your shots correctly, you will essentially be able to avoid being hit altogether simply by playing dynamically, by moving back and forth and using a short window to fire and then ideally if the enemy does penetrate or doesn't penetrate or misses then you can just fire back at them because this is a thing that is really curious that i noticed a lot in world of tanks blitz is when people get shot at they don't shoot back they just retreat obviously this doesn't work for an autoloader but if a single shot gun shoots at you you can shoot back because they're currently reloading so yeah what I don't really know what the WT is doing here, because if you're in an inferior tank on less hit points, then pushing might be a very terrible idea. And here's the thing about why why is the E3 mad at the STB for being better? I mean, it doesn't really matter at this point. I mean, the team is in the city. That's already everything you need to know about skill at that point. But if you keep your tank wiggling back and forth, you keep moving you're already going to have quite a big advantage because the majority of players in Blitz are casual players that don't really care about the performance. So throwing them off that little bit is already going to be quite a massive advantage, just like map control is a very massive advantage as well. And that's why there should always be an equal number of medium light tanks on each team for gaming. But unfortunately, there isn't. You got to do other things with the matchmaker that are uh, like that. So three versus Five. Not really great, but that E3 can't really get out. He should do that. He should just try to relocate, get himself into a more advantageous position, because here's the thing. If you're in a spot where you can't win, the best thing you can try to do is move into a spot where you can. Unlike that 205B, who's going to get completely destroyed because he can't get out of there. Three versus four isn't really that good. And now two versus four. Already 4,000 damage, but the team has completely crumbled. And that is another very important thing. Don't rely on your team too much. Play off your team, not with your team. It's random battles at the end of the day. Obviously, it's not the greatest thing to do, but if you want to do really well, you have to play off your team rather than with your team, right? Especially in a medium tank like this. You don't want to go into a city and just face on head into an E100 and take a shell straight to the face. Terrible idea. Obviously, it should be very obvious, but this is Wall of Tanks Blitz that we're talking about. So, there are not a lot of things that you need to get ahead to get to your 49% win rate, and everything beyond that is essentially optional. And the easiest way to get there is to simply understand that everybody, most people, doesn't, don't have a clue at all. So if you have a slight clue, you're already gonna get ahead. Everything after that, it doesn't really matter anymore. Want to have 60% win rate? Go for it. If you don't, who the heck cares at that point? Because it's about having fun in this game. That's all it's about. It's about having fun. If you ain't having fun, I don't know. That's a bad idea. And now, the E3 is still around, but he's a one-shot, so there's not going to be much left to do here for him now he's dead and also flame biscuit did help out quite a bit and also very cool name over there i guess but 7000 damage the team did crumble but that was the perfect opportunity to sit in an amazing spot and still do a lot of damage and that is what i want to get into a little bit further for looking at the leopard one which has all the dpm but none of the armor which makes this vehicle very difficult to play but if you know how to pull it off it can be one of the most rewarding and fun vehicles at tier 10 because here's the thing about teams 
Learning to read teams is one of the most important skills that you can have, right? Because essentially, you don't have to be perfectly accurate. Essentially, being able to predict something with 80% accuracy is about as close you can get to actually predicting it. But here's the thing. If you know, okay, is this going to be a bad team? Does this look like a good team? For example, in the last battle, everybody sort of bunched up in the city, which tends to end very badly in a lot of cases. So you want to play different in that kind of situation. Then if your team's a lot more open, a lot more spread out, so the chance of the battle lasting longer is a lot higher. So this, this is essentially the most important part is playing the game. It's playing the pl player. Like you understand the player, not the game. Obviously, things like knowing positions on a map, knowing general ideas about vehicles, right? Like, what is that thing's alpha damage? Roughly, what is its reload? You don't have to exactly know the IS-7's reload, but somewhere around 10 seconds, for example, would be a great thing to know, because then, if your i 7 just fired, you know, he's going to be able to fire again in roughly 10 seconds. But those are very easy things to learn if you just simply pay attention and look at all the stats, because they're... Those are numbers. You, you can read them, I'd say. In the case of the Leopard, just looking at the numbers, eh, it's not really it, because 4,000 DPM, no armor whatsoever. So how do you make it work? Well, your team have hit points. Your team ideally have armor. So you want to be the one dealing the damage now being the one taking the damage. So you're the top in the orgy of the well, Fang Blitz, essentially, in the Leopard 1. And the STB here, he's got no chance. He's completely screwed. He's gonna get some couple shots off, but at the end of the day, he's gonna die to the almighty Pikachu. Now, size 7 here. Yeah, just shoot him into the side. If you know how to position yourself on a map, you'll essentially start learning the flow of the battle. Like, where do people tend to go? Where people not tend to go? Where can I go to fight people? Where can I go to avoid people? Just pay attention in every single battle because no YouTube video can help you become an actually better player. They're only assistants. At the end of the day, you're the one that has to convert what you've learned and what you see into actual performance. And if you pay attention in game, that is the most important thing because simply just watching this video and then being like, huh, Leopard has high DPM, what do I do with that? Uh, it doesn't help much. But paying attention in game, is what is actually important, right? Or just simply not being the E4 and being stuck in a fight with a Leopard 1. But seeing opportunities like this is also a very crucial aspect about the game. Like knowing, wait a minute, there is an E4 that I can easily fight that doesn't have a fully traversable turret that I can attack, that I can go for, that I can farm free damage on. Seeing and finding those opportunities, especially for a vehicle like the Leopard 1 or other medium tanks, is the essential skill to have in Wall of Tanks Blitz. Find the opportunities and then use them wisely. Now, it's going to take some time, right? Ideally, a couple of thousand battles. Nobody's going to be good within the first couple of thousand battles. So if you're just a beginner, don't worry. Pay attention. Try, try to find out what you're doing wrong. That's the first thing to anything, to any level of improvement, is to know what's not going right, right? What can you do to improve what you're doing? Are you dying in a battle? Are you just sitting in a place where you can't get shots? Where could you go to get those shots? Just start thinking. Because if you start thinking, most of the time, you'll get to an answer. If the answer works, keep doing it. If the answer doesn't work, think again or in this case of the wz which seems to be a very high performing tank destroyer there's nothing you can do about it but again this vehicle is the ultimate success story of positioning map knowledge and tank knowledge because if you can do that you can too be over 7000 with the leopard one with the right portion of luck as well, obviously. But here's the thing. That's just not it. 
right? That's not it yet. Because we now go to the Hesh one. The FV-4202. The vehicle that requires a little bit more game awareness as well. Because the DPM is a lot lower than that of the Leopard. But this vehicle does have Hesh shells. Which means that you won't be able to penetrate a lot of the heavies head on with premium ammo. But... You have the excellent opportunity of using high alpha damage hash against most mediums and heavies sides. So positioning here also incredibly well important, right? And the easiest way to do that is to find yourself a default position. Like for example, this one. For a medium tank on this map, I go to the exact same position. You find yourself a default position that you always start off. And this position should be somewhat towards the middle of the map or two-thirds towards the middle of the map like this one it should be in the city ideally if it's a me if you're playing a medium tank it should absolutely not be in the city and it should also be in a place that you can ideally evacuate from quickly enough for example from this position you will have to cross the tank destroyer camping spot but you would be able to e evacuate towards the city relatively quickly if necessary However, if there's an equal amount of mediums and light tanks on both sides, eh, it's rarely going to be necessary if you're good enough. Now, eh, peeking a bit too aggressive here, just slightly, because there could be tank destroyers lurking in the back. The FV-4202's main strong point is its weird armor layout, where most of the armor is focused on the upper plate, and the turret is somewhat meh armored. However... It can still work. Now, I do assume that this is the Asia server, I think. But so, that eh, doesn't mean anything. But I, I do think this is the Asia server. I don't know how it is there, but basically, there's a lot more aggre There's a lot of aggressive, overly aggressive players on the EU. You really don't want to want to deal with those, right? So ideally, find yourself your default position at the start of the battle that you can go to, it's somewhat safe, and then from there you find out. Where are the enemies positioned, and where do you go from there? Like, do you stay, do you continue to fight from there, or do you have to move somewhere else to either evacuate because you're in a, at a disadvantage, or because the enemy team has went city, you have to fight somewhere else to find your damage. Now, obviously, if you have two mediums on your team with you, and those immediately go city, be prepared to lose, and ideally, don't go to the field then because if you're 1v3 against the enemy mediums you're probably going to die so you want a safe protected spot and ideally also some backup especially if you're in a medium tank and in a heavy tank too you never want to fight multiple tanks at the same time always want to have one target it doesn't have to be in the same location away from everybody else but you always want to have a maximum of one tank being able to fight back against you. And you can do that by, I don't know, hiding behind a rock even, where if you peek one side, one guy can shoot you. If you peek the other side, nobody can shoot you. Then you're fine. You don't want that be in a place where multiple enemies can engage you at the same time, because that's how you end up dying. And in this case, luckily, the team hasn't completely evaporated and the Hesh is flying just lovely. And look at the complete lack of awareness of the enemy team here. Because the enemy team here is a great help at achieving this high damage. Because they have no clue what's going on. No situational awareness whatsoever. Which is also another very important point. To have situational awareness. Right? You have your default position. You know where to go. But from there, if you don't start thinking about where to go next... It's not going to work. We're now here, there is, unfortunately, this is supremacy, so the points are ticking up. So we you're not just down. fighting the enemy team. You're also fighting your own point counter if you want to do the maximum amount of damage. So it's a great thing to win. What was that? How, how did the BZ screw that up? I'm very curious about that. And how do you screw that one up? 6,690. But before we get to the Conway, didn't something happen? His arms were just too short to box with God. 
Ah, that wasn't it. Anyway, let's get to the Conway. This vehicle has two guns. A 600 alpha damage derp gun and a 400 alpha damage essentially regular heavy tank gun. Now, the problem of this vehicle is that it doesn't really lead to much because the FE4005 then has a four short autoloader which plays because of the autoloader completely different. However, it doesn't have any armor as can be seen right here. So it has to be played quite carefully and thoughtfully, especially with the 400 alpha damage gun, even though it does have good HE rounds, you gotta be somewhat careful. Why is there a Tiger P here and why is he YOLOing? I mean, question. Answer me this in the comments down below, please. Is that a good way to play the game? Like, you have to have the right balance between having fun and performing well. You perform up to the standard that is carrying your own weight. Everything else doesn't really matter and it's about having fun. If you want to perform well, that is probably the worst way to do it, to YOLO into multiple enemy tanks at the same time, because as I said earlier, you want to fight one tank at one time and only one tank at one time, while always being aware of the big picture of the game. What is going on in the big picture, right? Because you can spend hours looking at, I don't know, accuracy numbers and all of that, but at the end of the day, where you really get good, is in battle by understanding how do people play, how do they play wrong, how do they play well, and then learning for yourself is what is the ideal way to play for you. Do you want to go more aggressive? Do you want to go more laid back? What is your style? And then find yourself some tanks that fit with that style. Because if you want to sit in a city and tank damage, you shouldn't be playing a leopard. You should be playing in a mouse. There are so many leopard players that drive straight into the city and evaporate in 30 seconds, when instead they were to pick any 100, they might have done something better. So find the tank that suits your playstyle the way you want to play. Something like the Conway is the playstyle of being quite laid back and letting the battle unfold. Now, ideally, you always, in a paper vehicle, you want to lay back. You want to get the damage from a distance while your teammates do all the heavy lifting. With heavy lifting, I mean getting shot at for you. But if you have a good team that stays alive, that lives like this one, you have you can leave yourself some little bit more time. Obviously not enough time that your team kills the enemy before you can get there. But if you go back to the STB battle earlier where the team completely evaporated, you have to act a lot quicker think a lot faster than in a battle like this. So there's always essentially an endless amount of battle scenarios that can happen. So the ideal way to approach any of them is to try and guess every possibility that might happen and then predicting which one is most likely to happen. Which sounds like a lot and is a lot, but that's essentially what you want to do in most cases to get really good to get ahead to look at that big picture to know everything that's going on to know what exactly you have to do to get the maximum out of a vehicle if you don't want to do that just use your aim get some funny shots instead because that's also cool or use the very good he rounds on the Conway now do i recommend the fe 4005 no but do I recommend the STB or the FE422 or the Leopard? Absolutely. If you have played the game for a, a couple of thousand battles and you feel ready to tackle those vehicles, it can be a lot of fun. But it is important to see beyond the Excel spreadsheet. Don't look at the number and read the number, but instead, what does that number actually do for you? That is what is important because like the Conway, it might not have the best armor, but it can still get bounces from a VK anyway, and it has good HE rounds that have already been used very successfully in this battle. So it is often more about applying the things that are written on the spreadsheet than the spreadsheet itself. And obviously, I highly encourage you to look at the stats of a tank before you play it because that can be incredibly helpful but think how do i make use of this what is the best way 
to get the maximum performance out of the numbers. Or just have fun, because that's what actually matters. And that is, again, 7,000 damage. And if you want to do 7,000 damage too, maybe that this video helped. Maybe it didn't. Put it down in the comments and put your replays on my Discord server.